Kenya, a land of stark contrasts. While exotic wildlife roam freely in game preserves, much of the human population is imprisoned by poverty in densely populated slums. Well-meaning outsiders often provide relief supplies, but this approach does not break the cycle of poverty. In fact, it can deepen it by making people feel inferior. A different approach is needed, a better way to help. Mathari Valley is the oldest and worst slum in Africa. It covers less than two square miles, but is home to nearly a million people. It is a place full of despair. Located just three miles from Nairobi's city center, crime is high and city services are virtually non-existent. Few people are employed. The Mathari River runs through the slum, carrying garbage and human waste. Families crowd into one-room shanties with no electricity. Countless children live on the streets, HIV AIDS runs rampant. Prostitution, alcoholism, and drug abuse are common. Hope is in short supply. Wallace and Mary Kamau were both born in Kenya, but far away from Mathari. Wallace grew up in the countryside in a Catholic family. They moved to Nairobi when he was 13 as he began high school. While at the University of Nairobi, Wallace began doing short-term missions with other students, including visits to Mathari. Mary grew up in central Kenya with 19 brothers and sisters. She recognized that education would be the key to a better life and eventually earned her way to Kenyatta University in Nairobi. Then she encountered Mathari. When I came to Mathari, I saw the children you know, they would be walking aloud, half naked, big bellies, red hair, because of bad nutrition. And then it's like they were barefooted, you know, and as they were walking aloud, I, I could see a lot of people lying on the ground because they would be so drunk. But because I hadn't seen that before, I actually thought that those were dead bodies all over the streets of Madare because like these people would be lying there and they had flies all over their faces and over their bodies. So to me, that, that picture kind of made me to think that these were dead people. And then seeing kids walking around these people, it really touched my heart and it really broke me. And, uh, and, I, and of course, the first question I asked myself, how can people live in these kind of conditions? How can people live and walk over open raw sewage, you know? How can people live and even eat from this kind of a place? And I started wondering, what is the government doing about this? Are there Christians that are aware about this kind of a thing? And if there are, what are they doing about this? And as I went back to college that night, that picture of the people, the children, I had seen in Madare never left my mind. And as I was asking myself these questions, I felt like something has to be done. Something has to be done. Mary began to visit Mathari each Saturday. She partnered with a local pastor and continued to reach out to the community, sharing the love of Christ in a personal, relational way. Meanwhile, Wallace continued to minister in Mathari even as he began his accounting career at Price Waterhouse. But he became frustrated. It was difficult to instill hope in people, to motivate them to change their lives. Then he met Mary, his future wife and ministry partner. When I realized what she was doing, it was an answer to the problem that uh, had always bothered me, of how I could effectively minister to the people in Matarevari, so that they could see the other side of life, possibilities of doing something decent to earn a living and glorify God in their lives. I realized uh, she was ministering to children and through the children, as uh, she met their needs, she was able to reach out to their families. And I realized uh, the most effective ministry in the slums was being present 
among them and to influence them over time. After receiving a vision from God, Mary started a preschool in the year 2000 with 50 children. In just two years, the school grew beyond what she and her partner could handle. The community's response to their relational approach was overwhelming. And so we were praying about the best way forward so that we could still be able to do effective ministry with the families. And in 2002, April, somebody led, uh, somebody told me about CHE, Community Health Evangelism, and how it works by teaching and training people in the community who in, who in turn are able to go and teach and train people in their neighborhoods. CHE is about empowerment, affirming people as the key assets of a community and helping them to realize their God-given potential. CHE is holistic, it addresses the physical, emotional, social, and spiritual, seeking transformation of individuals, families, and communities. Missions of Hope Success using CHE drew the attention of American missionaries Keith and Kathy Hamm from CMF International. By 2006, the Hope Partnership was formed to multiply the impact of Missions of Hope in Mathari. From the one school we had that we began with 50 children, now that school has a thousand and four children, and not only that one school, but we have nine other schools, and all in total we have about 6,000 children. As the first children began to reach middle school, a new phase in the vision unfolded, a boarding school campus outside the slums. We are out in uh, the Joska Boarding School Center, and uh, this is a facility that uh, we had always dreamt of as we started the work in the slums because we realized that uh, as we started working with these children that the only way that uh, they could be able to break out of the cycle of puberty is actually by excelling in the academics. And so we wanted to have a facility whereby they would have a conducive environment to study away from uh, the slums and uh, so we looked for land and uh, God was faithful. Uh, somebody blessed us with uh, $10,000, which we used to buy 20 acres. Out here, very far from the city, about 38 kilometers away. That's equivalent of about 20 miles. Fueled by child sponsorships, enrollment grew from 203 in 2007 to over 760 in 2011. A high school was started at Chaska in early 2012 to further enhance the life-changing impact of Missions of Hope on its students. You have more impact on their lives uh, because uh, you continue teaching them the Word of God and uh, we realize that um, that environment is very conducive for actually instilling good Christian values. And uh, we can tell by the people that have gone through there and they have graduated and gone on to high school. Uh, when they have gone to high schools, we have received reports from their teachers of how well behaved they are and uh, they are people of good character. Since I became part of Mission Sofu, my life has really changed because now I know what I'm learning for and I know about my future. In education, my parents were not able to provide for me fees for educating me. But now, I'm really learning in peace. And I know Christ since I came to this school. My life was miserable. But when I came to this school, my life has completely changed. I've seen the glory of God. As he says in his word in Jeremiah 29, 11, find not the plans for you. Plans not to harm you, but to give you hope and future. I was hopeless. Didn't know about any God, if God was existing. But my life now, I have big dreams and future that God has planned for me. The dream for Joska goes far beyond academics. A medical clinic will serve the students and the local community. Agribusiness projects have been started and will be greatly expanded to provide food for all the schools. The surplus will be sold to support other ministries of Missions of Hope. Amidst the tremendous success of the schools, Missions of Hope has been able to minister through children to reach their families. Elizabeth Niambura is 34 years old with two daughters and has lived in Mathari for her entire life. She earns less than $2 a day selling chapatis. Before she became a Christian, Elizabeth was forced to sell herself to gain access to firewood. 
Her second daughter, Cecilia, was one of the first 50 Missions of Hope children. She had no hope, you know, with these two girls, being a young woman, single mother, um, you know, not really having anybody she could really turn to. But then through her daughter, Cecilia, whom she had almost aborted, God really just using that, using this small girl to bring hope to her life and to the entire family and um, putting a smile on her. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, just a sequel number to mine come Elizabeth's story is compelling, but not unique. Christ-centered health, social work, and microfinance programs have changed many lives. Mathari residents have received training in HIV-AIDS prevention and home-based care. HIV support groups give hope to those infected with the virus. Many people have learned sewing or jewelry-making skills and then obtained microfinance loans to start their own businesses. Every Missions of Hope program embraces the Che philosophy of empowering people. A critical component of Missions of Hope is the Kenyan staff, numbering over 400. Many come from the Mathari community and have their own inspiring stories. Stephen Anyango was a gang member and dealt in stolen merchandise. In 1997, he committed his life to Christ and later began to serve the first Outreach Hope Church by cleaning toilets. He became an usher, an elder, and in 2009 was appointed pastor. Stephen has a message for other gang members and drug users. There is no joy out of uh, Christ. Christ brings joy. Christ brings hope. They are trying to get hope from uh, different things, but uh, I find hope in Christ. That's why I'm always smiling, because I know where I'm going. Isabella Gathoni became pregnant with her second child in the midst of marital and financial problems. Later, she felt called to serve the community and now ministers to children with disabilities. But I thank God because today I'm not the same and I have a heart to go and minister to the people in the valley. My story will not stop here. <laughs> Through Missions of Hope, I've built my confidence and I'm so happy to be doing what I'm doing. Like Isabella's story, the story of Missions of Hope International will not stop here. Their Christ-centered ministry is already impacting thousands of lives in the Mathari Valley. But there is more to be done. While 6,000 children are receiving their education, perhaps 50,000 more could be reached in Mathari alone. Permanent facilities and child sponsorships are needed to enable further growth. The visionary leadership, competent staff, and innovative Chase strategy are foundational ingredients for long-term community transformation. Missions of Hope is expanding into other slums in Nairobi and ultimately plans to impact many poverty-stricken regions in Kenya and around the world. An investment in the future of Missions of Hope is an investment in empowering people to transform their lives and their communities. Now is the time to invest in the God-directed vision of Wallace and Mary Kamau and the Missions of Hope team.